right, guys, I'm shooting this for the second time because I am not smart enough to work my microphone. Um, we are two days out from the big pour and uh, just came over here this morning. It's about 7.30 on Sunday. We get away from everybody nice and quiet, look over the details. We're ready. Um, normally, we're always pushing to get ready for something. This one uh, we booked out about two weeks prior to the pour because I wanted to make sure my guys were ready. One of them was having a baby last week and uh, wanted to make sure he was here. Uh, he's pretty integral to the pours. And uh, just wanted to make sure my, I had the best pump guy, the best, uh, the, the right concrete drivers, everything was lined up because this, this pour needs to go exactly right. Roof figure's about 110 yards. You know, I don't know, it's 400 to 500,000 pounds of concrete poured on styrofoam 20 feet off the ground. So that's, that's super solid. <laughs> And then we got about a 10 yard retaining wall here for a loading dock on the side of the building. A um, Couple things I wanted to kind of go over details because I probably won't have time during the pour. Something we have started doing, which is just a really slick way of doing it. Anytime we have a non-conforming corner angle, you know, something that's not a, you know, 45, you know, a block that you could buy. We have been using Gates twist tie or whaler tie um, corner forms. We started using them, uh, you know, when we're doing Nudura one, pools or build block uh, hardwall series pools because none of those one-sided blocks come with corner blocks um, because they don't come with corners you have to it's it's sort of like a bastard joint in a house where you got to do something to sew them up but in a corner it's more difficult to screw things across them so what we end up having to do is put plywood on both sides of the corner and then run simpson metal strapping around them and uh, the first couple of times we did it uh, my amish guys were in charge of it and i didn't really pay attention to how tedious it was when I was down in Dolphin, building those pools um, in uh, on the beach, I didn't have my Amish guys and I was doing some of it. I'm like, man, this sucks. This is like 100 screws per corner, probably more than 100 screws. And I was like, this is a real waste of time. And my brain goes back to the old days when I used to pour a lot of uh, Gates cam locks and Gates whaler tie forms. And I mean, these forms are really robust in pouring. This, this is a corner. This is made to hold back 12 inches of concrete, 15 feet high on its own. Um, and it's all we're using it for is have this nice hinge where we don't have to worry about strapping something around it. We just fold it to whatever the corner is, screw it to the webs, and we're done. Five minutes instead of an hour, probably. Um, they last forever as a form, so I don't know how long they can last when they're not even really touching the concrete. They're just holding everything together. So this wall, I mean, it's, it's uh, about 10 feet high at the highest point, but it drops down over here to, you know, like six feet, and the whole thing tapers down. One thing you guys saw from the drone videos is that uh, we use, we're obviously using the fab form bracing on this, um, the zons and zuckles and all that. The thing I really like about that system, uh, among other things, is how I can run all my scaffold brackets and everything on a level, easily, on things. There's, there's three steps in this footing. I tried to make them exactly 16 inches and all that, and, um, but you're, when you're using plumb wall or giraffe, there's a hole like every six or eight inches, and that is where you can select to hang those scaffolds. So if you step up and it's not running perfectly level, you have to either lift the brace, you just have to do a lot more figuring. With the Zaunch, you put them exactly where you want them. That's why I love them for pools. We can be running up a slope, but run exactly level with our horizontal whalers without any thought. We just put the screws in, we use the ICF to line them up. There's a million ways to do it, but it's very fast and simple. So we got the Zaunch on the inside. This wall is baby stuff. It's going to be probably the last thing we pour. I mean, it's a place to burn a little bit of a wet load if they don't listen to me. But again, we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be having 4,000 PSI concrete coming out at about a four slump. We're actually bringing it out about a three and a half. Um, that's about the minimum slump that plasticizer works. So we'll take three and a half and slump it uh, with plasticizer up to hopefully close to a six, you know, five and a half, six. Um, I will probably be on a vibrator vibrating in the beams up there. And um, you know the boys will be screeding. All like I said, Austin will get up there with me and shoot a little video, kind of showing how the whole process is going to work. But the boys are going to do 90% of it, and they won't be on camera. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll bring you guys a bunch of uh, a bunch of content on the pour day. But I wanted to bring you little details that I wouldn't have time to during. Um, like I said we uh, we always talk about the pucker factor. This is uh, nowhere near the Dolphin Island pools. This thing's got shoring that I know isn't going anywhere. Um, the concrete, you know, weighs close to half a million pounds, but if you divide it up between all of the uh, square foot we have up there, you're talking about less than 80 pounds per square foot. I can stand in the square foot and jump up and down, and I weigh a lot more than 80 pounds, and uh, 
nothing happens. It's, it's feel, it feels great. You worry about shifting, stuff like that. We'll get into that during the pour, but um, I think we've, uh, we've really dotted our I's, crossed our T's. We have not been in a hurry on this deal. Um, I am wearing my Clay Travis DBAP shirt. I'm not gonna say what that means because I don't want to get demonetized, but it is definitely the attitude you have to have when, uh, when doing something like this. So, um, you know, DBAP, I will see you guys on Tuesday. I think it's gonna go great. I'm not that worried. Maybe I wish I was a little more worried, but I've been looking over the details all morning. Came over here while it's quiet to, uh, to kind of investigate my I's and T's and make sure they're all dotted and crossed. I think we're in great shape. I will uh, see you guys Tuesday, and uh, it's gonna be on like Donkey Kong. I will see you guys then.